Hello everyone, welcome back to Analog, a hate story. Okay, so it turns out that my progress had not been lost from last episode. I made no manual saves, but the good thing is the game has auto-saves. Yes, down here. For some reason the default page is page 1. But if you click on auto, here you go. So this is the latest one. And is either at or very close to where I left off, I think. So yes, it turns out that how you save the game, uh, if you... Unfortunately, these buttons don't have tooltips, so it's really not very clear what the hell they do. Apparently, are you sure you want to quit? And then you're presented with an option to cancel, that's obvious, but also quit or main menu. Are you sure you want to quit? And then there's an option called quit, and then one called not quit. The implication of that to me is that pressing the main menu is not a type of quitting. However, it is. You press main menu, you have now quit the game. You haven't closed the game, but you've quit your current session. I can't get back to it. So yeah, that is not a good system. Not a good one at all. It turns out how you save is by pressing the gear icon, which takes you to the settings. So you do not access the settings from the main menu. You access it directly. And then you go to the page and then you do that. Yeah. Okay. Anyway. Hopefully I have not read this before. Insufferable Child by Young Sook's Wife. Let me make sure I haven't read this. Much of the Pale Bride we brought in household. No, I have not read this. Okay. Dearest Mother, do you recall how in my last letter I mentioned the Pale Bride being brought into the household? I take back any kind words I might have said about her. That awful child is nothing but the most insufferable person I have ever met. I just thought I would have a little more time of peace with young Sook's adopted mother visiting her own family. Wait. Oh, I, I misread that. I just thought I would have had a little more time of peace. With young Sook's adopted mother visiting her own family, I have been given full responsibility over that miserable child. What happened to my promised domestic bliss? She is in trouble so often, one would think she were a boy. She acts like one, too. I suppose it can't be helped. She says she lived her first 12 years in the past, and I can see it. She certainly acts as though she's from a less civilized time. Just last night, she made a huge scene at dinner time. She kept trying to rudely leave the table in front of Young Sook, Young Sook and father-in-law, loudly insisting that she was too sick to eat. She has said this before, too. I was worried, so I had a doctor examine her. She is, of course, in perfect health. When I asked why she thought otherwise, she started talking about how pale and thin she was. She's not truly unhealthy. All she was doing was rubbing it in that she is far more delicate and beautiful than I. What a cruel little child. Why must she be so spiteful to me? Wow. Young Sook's wife, um, doesn't understand... ...what's happening with the Pale Bride. The Pale Bride, I don't know what the hell her condition was, but she was in cryostasis because she's sick. And she's still sick. I guess their doctors just aren't advanced enough to be able to tell what's wrong with her. And if they can't tell what's wrong with her, then I guess medicine has devolved since the point from when she was in cryostasis? Or put into cryostasis? Hmm. <laughs> That's funny. It's so, yeah, it's so rude. Rudely leaving the table because she was too sick to eat. Yeah, how rude. You know would be far less rude is forcing food into your mouth when you're not hungry and then vomiting. That's better. Fucking idiot. Oh, hmm. Do you want more from Kim Yong Sook's wife? Or do you want the reply from her mother? Well, I'd like both. Um, let's hear the reply from her mother. Sorry, I'm afraid I don't have anything. I can explain why if you want. Sure. You have to understand something. It's traditional for women's letters to be deleted after being read, so the disk space can be reallocated. Seriously? Jesus. Women are considered so worthless that they're not even allowed to use disk space beyond the minimum time required to read a message. Wow. 
They really want to parcel out their ones and zeros, I guess. <laughs> women, t women weren't really supposed to read or write. Oh yeah, that's right! It's frowned upon for them to learn how to read, but very common. Certainly the nobles did, it's just the idea was that spending time on education got in the way of the important virtues for women, which was serving her husband. So in practice, even if a woman was literate, she could at least excuse it by destroying her words afterwards. It's less pretentious if at least the writing wasn't permanent. Does all that sound reasonable to you? I... no? That's stupid. Yes. Yes it is. But that's how it is. But regardless, Kim Yong Sook's wife was definitely considered a very virtuous woman, so I have none of the letters that she received. So I'm sorry, I can't give you anything there. Hmm. Well, can you give me anything from... Kim Yong Sook's wife? Very well, I can give you a couple from his wife. Here you are. I guess she was less virtuous. Okay, so I guess when I do that, she unlocks more if I go back? Is there going to be more? I don't know, maybe there's more in a different block? I don't know, I'm just going to keep reading. The Bride's Adolescence, Kim Chung Su. The Pale Bride grew to be a fine, demure young wife, but she was not always this way. Near the end of the year 319, or 319, she had a temper unruly enough to be mistaken for a boy's. Do not look upon her wild days with disapproval. She was from another, less civilized time. Rather, look upon her eventual submission as a testament to her good character and filiality. That she was able to overcome such a wild nature for the sake of the Kim family and the sake of her husband. One evening, she stormed into the common room while I was discussing business matters, business matters with a detti. We need to talk, she demanded loudly. When I indicated I was busy, and that only caused her to become even louder. Right now. Embarrassed, I was forced to excuse him to address the child. Is this a joke? Are you serious? You've made wedding plans, she shrieked at me. Please, calm yourself, I told her, and sat her down. After admonishing her for her rude interruption, I tried to do what I could to calm her myself. It seemed that she had a rather bizarre set of expectations, that she wouldn't marry until she was... She was many years after growing into a woman, that she would elope with any love-struck man who came her way with no regard for her own chast chastity, that she would have no assistance or protection in finding a suitable husband. Simply put, her ideas were as bizarre as they were dangerous, and for this she has gotten angry at the she had gotten angry at the news, rather than excitement that one would expect from a girl who's found out that she would be getting a husband. Not even the sensational news that it would be to the emperor of all people would calm her. It sounds like she came from a much better time. A much better time. The Pale Bride wasn't kidding when she said the future sucks. <laughs> Please don't put too much weight into that. A less civilized time, he says. Can you believe that, man? I was just thinking the same thing. It sounds far more civilized. I'm not giving you any more from him. It's not relevant. It's all just ignorant patriarchal stupidity. What an awful man. Alright, anything else in this block? No. Block index, what do we have here? Block 9. Holy crap. There is a lot here from Kim Yong Sook and Kim Yong Sook's wife. Alright, the new wife, Kim Yong Sook. My new wife moved in last week, and she's been pestering me ever since. Everywhere I go in the house, she's either following me or waiting outside the door. The first time it happened, it unnerved me like nobody would believe. The most recent time, I had stopped being unnerved and moved on to just plain annoyed. I only had one thought. Why won't the silly girl just give me some peace? No wonder her parents were so anxious to send her to our home. Hours before she'd been hanging around in the room, I finally kicked her out when my mathematics tutor arrived. The session went without any hitch, aside from reminding me just how much I hate the damn subject. <laughs> and after a few hours, he left. And who's kneeling right outside my door? It's her, of course. Have you been there the whole time? I asked her. 
Of course she had. For the love of... We need to talk. So I brought her back in and sat her down at the desk. What... What is this? You're driving me insane. I don't have the time to be babysitting you constantly, I said. I wasn't angry, just annoyed. But she looked alarm all the same. For a moment, I was worried she was going to start crying. Instead, she just turned her head away. Do you hate me? She asked. Women! Why must they be so damn emotional? I re <laughs> I'll comment after. I reminded myself that I was talking to a female. I needed to approach this differently. Look, I said. You're very pretty. I appreciate that you're trying. So no, of course I don't hate you. She looked back at me, seeming like she was holding back tears. Then why don't you need me for anything? Is there nothing I can do for you? No, not unless you can help me study the classics. She looked down. Right now, nothing is more important to me than passing the civil service exam. Can you even read? A little, she said. A little isn't enough, I replied. What if I sat in on one of your lessons? I could learn more. I'd be quiet, of course. Please. I was about to say no, then I changed my mind and agreed. When I heard her next line. At, at least give me a chance to earn your approval, please. My comment for this is, I'm starting to feel sick. Ugh. Okay, next. The new official, Kim Chung Soo. On the 13th day, Young Sook finally passed the civil service examination. Otherwise, the final month of the 318th year was without event. Okay, well, he passed it. The new girl, Young Sook's wife. Dearest mother, it seems as though there will be a new girl in the family. I don't really understand the details, but her name is The Pale Bride and it seems as though she's a 13-year-old girl who's been kept inside a giant egg through some sort of magical technology, passed through the Kim family over the generations. As I said, I don't understand how such a thing is possible, but she seems nice enough. <laughs> this sounds so ridiculous. Kept inside a giant egg through some sort of magical technology. Yong Sook seems quite annoyed at her arrival, however. He explained to me why. The plans to offer her as a concubine to the Emperor She's young and beautiful, and he's still without a son, so it'll probably go a long way in currying favor. And that's bad? I asked him. Not strictly, he admitted, but it means father doesn't have much faith in me if he's making contingency plans that don't require my involvement. Now I'll never know if my success was on my own merits or because the emperor thinks the girl he'll give him is cute. Did you even tell him your plan of working your way to become a high magistrate? If he knows that, how can he think a contingency is necessary? I asked. Good question, he said, and left the room looking annoyed. To this date, these worries of his still seem to plague him, and I can't seem to do anything to relieve him of that. Alright, apparently that's everything I've read in here. I mean, I've read everything in here already. Block 10. Confidence by Ryu Chehua. When my husband asked what I thought of the idea of him taking a new wife, excuse me, I presented him with the weakest of smiles, but said that I thought it was a good idea. If he thought so, um, that I would be happy if a younger woman were to relieve me of the pressure of bringing him a son. I have no doubt that this is the answer he wanted me to give, with a convincing enough expression to go along with it. If there's one thing I am confident in, it is my ability to read exactly what my husband wants to hear. Having heard that the girl is he is considering is only 13 years of age, however, it is certain that I can have no confidence in any other thing. He'll take her in a few years, right when she's reached marriage egg, age. She will be at the peak of her beauty and won't have matured too much. Doubtlessly, unlike me, she'll have no problem delivering the son he needs. Perhaps jealousy is unbecoming of me, but it is pragmatic too. When we were young, his affections for me were so strong, but now that we are both old, how could I possibly compete with a young bride? That's so sad. 
It's like now that she can't give him a son, and I guess isn't... Doesn't consider herself beautiful anymore because she's old, whatever age her being old is. Maybe that's 30? Maybe 30 is considered old? I don't know. But because of those two things, because she's, she doesn't consider herself beautiful anymore, and because she apparently can't deliver a son, she seems to think she's completely worthless. That's really sad. Well, that fear turned out to be completely unfounded. You'll see why soon enough if you read more about the Pale Bride. Alright, are there any new files? No messages are unread. Wait a minute, do I not have any new documents? I don't. Huh. Okay, I know I need to find the Pale Bride's birth name. Uh, because that's someone's password, but I don't remember whose password it is. Um, I guess I'll speak with Hyane. You were trying to find out more about the Pale Bride, right? You should try showing me a message from the person you'd like to read more entries by. I think I've gotten her comment on everything, haven't I? I'm pretty sure I have. Yep, it's all gray. 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 And gray, I'm pretty sure I've gotten her comment on everything. But let me just go through here and check. Nope. Oh, wait, here we go. The Pale Bride did keep an extensive diary. I'll try to find you some more entries. Ooh, thank you. Oh, whoa, here we go. Okay, is it just for this block? Yep. A lot of entries from the Pale Bride. Held prisoner. Dear Diary, Today I was forced to stay in the home all day. I didn't get to leave yesterday, or the day before that, or the day before that, or the day before that, or the... or any other day, either. I want to write about how much the ship has changed since I was put into stasis, but I can't even see it. I keep asking why I'm being kept prisoner. Nobody will tell me. That woman who keeps bossing me around? She's awful. I'm dying here, I keep telling her I'm sick. That's why I was in stasis to begin with, but she won't listen. She just treats me like I'm a stupid kid. I tried to argue with her. Look at how pale I am. Can't you see that I'm sick? I swear I'm not making up what she, what she said in response. Why must you be so rude? It's not polite for a girl to boast about her beauty. Beauty? I tried not to cry in front of her. I've had to do that a lot. I'm not beautiful. I have a compromised immune system. I shouted at her and ran away. I don't remember what she said back. Something about using big words, I think. How stupid is she? She hates me. I don't know why, but she hates me. That's not why I'm not allowed to go visit the ship plaza, though. Chung Su, the man who keeps telling me to call him father, said the same thing. He promised me that I would have a chance to leave soon, though. I don't think he's being nice, though. I'll write about him more later. Right now, I have to go to bed, or the woman will get mad at me again. Okay, so something I've just picked up from reading this. Uh, where was it? I want to write about how much the ship has changed since I was put into stasis. Okay, so... So just looking at broad strokes of time here, on the ship. She was not on Earth or whatever. She was not put into stasis on Earth and then put onto the ship and woken up later. She was part of the ship and put into stasis on the ship and now is woken up later in the ship's history. However, later in the ship's history, everything appears to have gone to shit, and it looks like technology has devolved and 
everything and the whole culture that they're in has become incredibly patriarchal and sexist and shitty. So what happened between the time she was put into stasis and the time she was woken up to cause all of those the technological and social downfall? What happened? Oh wait, did I get her, um... Did I get Hyun A's comment? No, I did not. Oh, I'll, I'll just let you keep reading. Fair enough. Please, let me know when you've read all the ones I just gave you. Okay. You know what I really like about Christine Loves Games? Is that it seems like every single character in her games are ridiculously cute. I mean, look, e the AI, even the AI, which has been inactive for, what, hundreds of years and hasn't had anyone to talk to, is fucking adorable. I love it. It's a like cuteness overload. All of the characters in her games. Women's Quarters, The Pale Bride. Dear Diary, I got in trouble today, but for the first time it was my own fault. A little bit, at least. I still think Sister-in-Law was being crazy about it, but I should have known better. And now that I write that, it looks ridiculous. God, what is living with these people doing to me? The computer console in my room doesn't have anything in it. I don't just mean it doesn't have all the cartoons I brought from Earth, or any of my books or anything, I mean there's literally nothing there for me to entertain myself with at all. Nothing. So I thought to myself that maybe sister-in-laws might be different and checked. It wasn't. So instead, I decided to go check in Father's study. Not stooping or anything, just looking at his computer for books. I had a thought that it might be bad, but my real father never would have gotten too upset. What could the harm be? I was in there for maybe 10 minutes, looking for anything that was even written in Korean. There was nothing. By the way, every single book, symbols that looked like Chinese characters. Every single one. I think maybe something terrible happened in the past that made all the computer data get deleted, and everyone forgot how to read Korean. And also, they all got really stupid about things. I don't think I'll ever find out why. It just sucks. <laughs> so something terrible happened, that caused them, everyone to forget how to read Korean, and also they all got really stupid. I think that about sums it up, huh? Anyway, I was only in there for 10 minutes, searching through the console, when Young Sook walked in. I thought he was going to get angry, but actually, he just acted like he was really scared. He didn't scold me when he dragged me out, he just looked really worried. I only got in trouble when he brought me back to his wife. He told her, do you have any idea where she was? She was in the men's quarters, looking through father's computer. Do you have any idea how he would react if he saw that? You're supposed to be watching her. She apologized repeatedly to him. I just didn't know what to say. I don't think sister-in-law did either. After he left, she gave me this really long and really awful lecture. Why would you go into the men's quarters? Why would you go looking for books? Why must you be so unfilial? Do you really not understand that you're a girl? I told her I didn't understand. I mean, of course, I'm a girl, but I had no idea what she was talking about. When I told her that, she just lectured at me some more. I hate her so much. Oh, Hyane is messaging me. Yes, what is it? So, there's probably one big question that's on your mind, isn't there? That being... Uh, that isn't being addressed at all, right? Um... Is there? Which question? Oh, yes, actually, that is exactly what I was wondering. What happened in between the Pale Bride being frozen and waking up that made society go all wrong, right? Yes. I figured. I mean, it's the obvious question. Sorry, I wish I could tell you, but I'm afraid that mystery is forever lost to time. I guess that's pretty anticlimactic. Sorry. I really want to know, too. Whatever terrible thing happened, it must have been really, really big. But I'm afraid all the log data from before the year one was wiped, and all the clocks were reset. I guess that's why it was called year one. Anyway, so nobody remembered what happened in between, or even how long it was between. 
It was hundreds of years, I assume, but I really don't know. Huh. So, yeah, really sorry to let you down there. That part's going to be a mystery forever. There's nobody who could possibly know. Are you sure about that? What about Mute? You'll just have to take it as a given. Sorry. I don't accept that. I don't accept that at all. Straight to hell. Wait, she's messaging me again? Say, before you keep going, can I just interrupt you for a couple minutes? Sure. Thanks. It's just, well, you're finding out so much about the Magungwa, but I know absolutely nothing about where you're from. It's not just that there's been nobody to talk to for centuries. I mean, I don't like that either, but the ship is all I really know about, and it's been disconnected from all other civilization for so long. So, you're from the United Korean Space Probe Agency, right? Or I guess maybe a future version of it? Uh... I don't know, a am I? I actually don't know if I even know where the character is from. Was it ever stated? And if it was, I guess I forgot. Sh sure. Right, of course. What I really want to know about is Earth. I mean, I'm sort of aware of it. I know it's the planet we all come from. But I don't really know anything at all about it. I have, <clears throat> I have some ideas, but I don't think they're really right. But you know all about it, right? I mean, even if you're not from there yourself, you know what it's like, right? Yes. Oh, wonderful. I sort of understand the basics, like it's a big sphere that everyone lives on, and there's unimaginably vast amounts of open space. And you can only see the stars at night, right? Because the sky all just looks blue during the day. All of this is just what I know from the Pale Bride. She never saw Earth. She was second generation, born on the ship after it had long left the Earth's star system. But her parents were born on Earth, so she heard some stories from them when she was young, and I think they brought a lot of books and movies with them. I don't know, I'm just a little skeptical, given that she was just a child when she learned all that. Maybe she got mixed up. Hmm. What can I actually ask in a yes or no question? I didn't realize how hard this would be. Well, alright. So the Magungwa was originally supposed to be establishing a colony at some star or other a hundred light years away. I know that. That was a really long time ago. Did other ships ever succeed where we didn't? Or is it still just Earth? Uh... I, I don't know. Um... I have no idea. This is weird, why am I being asked questions that I don't know the answers to? My character would know the answer to it, but I don't. Uh... I'm going to guess with how far in the future we are that there are other planets? Ah, well, that's wonderful to hear. Hmm. Oh, I know. Is it really true that on Earth, seasons aren't just metaphors? Like, oh, this sounds silly now that I actually put it into words. But the Pale Bride seemed to think that winter wasn't just something that happened to just you emotionally. On Earth, it was when actually an entire part of the planet turned frigid. Does that have any sort of basis in reality? That's obviously impossible. Actually, yes. Wow, my word, that's amazing. Seriously? That sounds like... I can't even imagine that. What else was there? Oh, um, there was a city that her parents were from. I think it was called... Pyongyang? They described it as being amazing. If you looked up, all you could see were huge, bright white buildings, as tall as a hundred or more decks. And on the, uh, I'm not sure what the word for this, uh, it means sort of the bottom deck? Anyway, they said that at the bottom, the streets were lined with willow trees, and the tops of the buildings had flower gardens. Have you ever been to that city before, or at least heard of it? Yes. Really? So it does exist, then? Is it really as beautiful as they said? Truly? 
I don't know. Uh, sure. Wow, amazing. Just amazing. I'd love to see that. Oh my god, Hyunae is so adorable. Just, just look at her face. Ah, she's so cute. You know what it is? It just sounds so perfectly romantic. I'm not really, well, you've seen what the logs all talk about. I'm not used to things being romantic. It sounds nice. That's really my question, I guess. Is Earth worth being romantic about? Of course. Ah. Well, I guess I've already wasted enough of your time with all my silly questions, haven't I? There's just, well, please humor me once more, and then I promise I'll stop bothering you. Do you think I could ever see Earth? Um... I... I guess? I mean, she's an AI, so I presume I could download her, right? And if I could download her, then I could take her to Earth, so it's possible. Ah, oh, well, thank you for saying that. It... whoa, that's weird. It just sounds so romantic, and I'd really like to see it someday. Thanks. Very well, I promised I'd stop wasting your time. So, what did you want to ask me about? Okay, back to this. Straight to Hell, The Pale Bride. Actually, wait, hold on. How much time is passing here? Women's Quarters, Straight to Hell. Alright, so this is like two to three weeks after the Women's Quarters thing. Yeah. Dear Diary, this nightmare has gone for so long, I think I'm starting to forget what life used to be like. I have a new theory. Father was wrong about the cryostasis keeping me alive until I could be cured. I think it didn't work at all. I think I just died and went straight to hell. I decided I'm going to write down all the things I used to be able to do, just so I can remember. I used to be able to read books. I used to be able to have friends. I used to be able to go to school. I used to be able to leave the home and go visit the plaza or anywhere else on the ship. I think I even used to be able to to be in any part of the house I wanted and talk to visitors as much as I'd like. I have memories of always spending time with my father and mother and brother in the living room. I know my real father thought being respectful was important too, but I don't know. I'm so confused now. I thought he always taught me to be strong and to speak up for myself. Did he really say that? I'm being sarcastic, of course, but the scary thing is, sometimes... Sometimes I really do forget. Sometimes I think, if I was just... If I just was obedient to what sister-in-law tells me to do, it would make things easier. Maybe I should just give in and be passive. Just sometimes. I'm scared, though. What if I end up really believing that? Okay, Wife the Pale Bride, this was about a month after the last entry. Dear Diary, today I found out why the, hus the household servant, I still can't believe we have one, why, has been so insistent on teaching me how to cook. Well, she doesn't call it that, she calls it serving meals. A year ago I wouldn't have thought that sounded sinister, now I know better. I don't care about this, I told her after the seventh day in a row of her lessons. Can't we do something else, like going back to sewing? I always loved cosplay, let's do that. I know it's not fun, but your sister wants you to learn this. Two, and it is very important, your father is concerned too, so take it seriously please, young miss. Don't call me that, I said. I don't remember exactly what I said to prompt her next response, along the lines of, why is it important, or something. I don't remember what I said, just a response, which blew me away. So you'll make a good wife, of course. Again, I don't remember what I said in response, maybe I told her that I didn't want to, maybe I told her that it was, that I was too young to care about that, maybe I said I'd just go marry someone who was good at it himself when it was time to care about that. Whatever I said, she didn't take it seriously. Don't be silly, she said as if I was obviously joking. Your father really is worried about your marriage next year. Now is not the time to joke around on the matter. My what? I asked her. Oh my, she said. He never told you? I'm sorry. Forgive me. Pretend I said nothing. I didn't mean to ruin the surprise. 
I'm sure he'd want to explain the happy news himself. Are you serious? I asked. The idea didn't make any sense. But, since when did anything in this hell make sense? She said yes. You're going to be so happy to hear who it is. He'd better explain, I shouted as I stormed off. He'd better. Hmm. Oh, hi. Oh, hi, Hyane. Say, do you mind taking a break for a couple minutes just to chat? Sure, go ahead. Thanks. I appreciate that. Really, I appreciate that you're here. I know you've got ulterior motives. What they are, I'm not really sure, but most people do. And that's alright, all the same. I'm glad you're reading these logs, though. Even if you don't really care, it's better than nobody from outside the ship ever seeing them, which is what I thought for sure would happen. Or am I just being cynical? If so, my apologies. Please tell me, what do you think about what you've read of the Pale Bride? It's tragic. Yeah, I'm glad to hear you say that. I'm really glad to hear you say that. Nobody else seemed to think so. There's something, well, here. I've added another message for you. Just, well, why don't you read it yourself? Oh, I think I'm going to find out her family name. At least use my real name. Dear Diary, This week I tried to convince the old man to put me back into stasis by going on a hunger strike. It didn't work, obviously. On the plus side, at least I figured out where that stupid name they all keep calling me came from. Sorry, that last bit was written yesterday. I couldn't bring myself to keep going. I just kept crying. I still would be too, but, well, it just gets exhausting after a while. I'm too tired to cry. Things aren't going to get better. They can't get better. I'm not going to be put back into stasis. I'll be dead by the time I'm 18. Why, oh why, did I ever agree to be frozen in the first place? If the future can't make me better, I'd rather die with my family there at least, rather than these awful Kims. I wonder if they'll realize I was right after I die. Anyway, hunger strike. It was really hard, and I kind of cheated by sneaking into the kitchen while nobody was looking, but it, it at least convinced Father to listen. Fine, he said by the fourth dinner time. I'll show you why I can't. Up until he said that, I had been hopeful. Everything would be fine if he just put me back. I thought. But... Sorry, I guess I've been trying to write this for two days now. It's really hard, anyway. Uh, it's really hard. Anyway, he took me to go see the egg I hatched from, his stupid name for the stasis pod. When he said hatched, the worst possible thing came to mind. Worse, it turned out to be true. In order to get me out, he had smashed apart the glass with a hammer. The pod was still full of shards. All my hope died when I saw the broken glass. The time was right to bring you into this world, he said. I don't remember what I said. Something obscene, probably. It wasn't enough. I know it's hard, Pale Bride, but it is for a, gra a greater purpose. What was the point of arguing? It was broken, and nobody in this awful future would know how to fix the pod now. Instead, I argued with what I could. Why do you keep calling me that? I said to him. He responded by pointing at an inscription my real father had left on the pod, a message for me to read when I woke up. The first line was written in Chinese characters, his idea of being fancy, I suppose, but he explained them in Korean underneath. See, the old man said, the rest is foreign and archaic, but it names you at the top, the Pale Bride. It didn't say that. It didn't say that at all. I shrieked at him in response. You idiot! You moron! You illiterate! Probably some other things, too. I can't remember exactly. I was furious. Are you stupid? That's not how those characters read. It says, to my sick daughter. Sick daughter. Sick daughter. You illiterate monster. It says, sick daughter. Me. He started to argue, but then stopped. I think he was patronizing me, as if I can't read simple Korean script. He just asked, in the smuggest voice, Then what should I call you, child? I screamed. I'd already told him a thousand times before. Hyun A. My name is Hyun A. Wait, what? That's the Pale Bride? Wait a minute, did she... Su she couldn't go back into the pod, so did she find a way 
to up, like, turn herself into an artificial intelligence? Did she upload her consciousness to a computer? Hi. Yeah, there's a shocking revolution revelation for you. I can guess what you're going to ask, and yes, it's me. Okay. Well, I, I guess you are pale. Well, you asked for all those logs, right? That's the information you were looking for, wasn't it? I'm not really an AI. Wait. If... If you're not an AI, then what are you? Oh, I mean, I am now, but I used to be a girl, and I just thought, well... I thought it would be easier to just pretend to be the log-keeping program rather than explain the whole situation. I don't really wish to drag out the point. You've already heard enough about me. I'm sure you don't want more. I mean, I understand. I figured out what you were actually looking for at the very start. It's obvious, really. Well, I've re-enabled admin access. Just, please, be honest with me. Why is it... Uh, what is it that you wanted to know about? Hmm. Well, uh... Well, wait, I mean... I wanted both. I mean, I didn't know it was you, so I wasn't specifically looking for information about you. Uh... Oh, no, 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 I think I get the question. When I was reading about the Pale Bride, what was my main reason? Well, I did want the admin password, but I also was interested in learning more about the Pale Bride and what happened to her and where she came from. I think that was more interesting to me than finding the admin password, actually. Really? You really mean that? Yes. Wow, I... Don't know what to say. I'm not really used to this. It's... I... Thank you. Thank you so much for listening to me. After so many years, after what happened, it's just really nice to be heard. If I could hug you right now, I would. Okay, so now I have the password. Uh, how do I use it? Use override terminal. Maybe a new command will open up? Uh, help. Oops. How do I log in? What is SU? What is download? How does that work? Please use SU first. Okay, so that's login. Or something. Requires password to use. Okay. So SU Hyun... How's it spelled? Hyun... There it is. Admin password accepted. You are now recognized. Uh, warning system error detected. Data corruption in AI Core 1 has been detected. Try recovering now. Yes. Checking for damage sectors. 32 damage sectors detected. Now attempting repair. Okay. I hope this works. Data corruption in AI Core. 60%. Come on, come on. 80%. 90%. You can do it! Success! 32 sectors repaired. Excellent. Currently available personalities. Hyun A and Mute. Ooh! I now get to talk to Mute. I wonder who Mute is. Hmm. But before I do that, let me try download and see what that does. Starting active systems download will permanently terminate session. Are you sure you want to continue? No AI personality will be downloaded. Oh, shit. No. Oh. <laughs> so wait, does that mean... Oh. At this point in the game, I can just leave, right? Now that I have the admin password, I can download all the log files and just bring it back and just complete the mission. But, frankly, I don't even care about the mission anymore. Now I'm just curious what happened. So, yeah, I'm not going to do that. Okay, let's activate mute.
Alright, we need to disable Hyane. Okay, enable AI. Mute. What do you bet? Mute is another extremely cute person. It's pretty much guaranteed. Personality Mute is now activated. Now let's go meet Mute. Let's hope Mute is not Mute. What do you know? I told you. Uh, okay, well, okay, she seems angry. What the hell is she wearing? Oh my god. That is a very... resplendent, I think that's the right word, dress. Okay, okay, what the hell is going on? Wait. Remote connection established. Is there somebody out there? From outside the ship? Okay. Sorry, I'm just taking an inventory of systems right now. Could you give me a second here? Like, I've been out of commission for 622 years? <laughs> right, that's kind of messed up. Anyway, I'm up to speed now. Logs are basically saying that nothing has happened since I went offline, except the ship's slowly losing power, and the main reactor has seen better days. But you! Hello! You're the first person from outside the ship I've had contact with in... Well, as far as I can remember. I'm Mute, AI in charge of the Magungwa security operations. It's nice to meet you. Okay, looks like I can't actually get any text input from you. I'm guessing this is all that crazy-ass murderess's fault. I'm sorry. Wait, the crazy-ass murderess? Who the hell is that? But why don't you tell me a bit about yourself anyway? Like... Sorry, this is kind of a weird question, but are you a man or a woman? A man. Gotcha, sir. That's good to know. Do you have any idea how hard it is to talk to someone when you don't even know... Uh, know that much about them? True. So, where are you from? Earth, or are you from one of the colonies? Wait, there are colonies, right? I mean, I always got the impression that the ship was supposed to be founding one. I think so, so I'm gonna say yes. Oh, okay. So, are you from one of them, or from Earth? Uh... I guess I'm picking my backstory? I'm from Earth. Cool. I wish I could ask you what it's like. I think I'm from there too, but, well, my memory only goes back 300 years before getting deactivated. Pretty much all my knowledge of anything before the year zero comes secondhand from the Pale Bride's childhood diaries. And, well, man, they're about as childish as it could possi as it possibly gets. I guess I'm really not going to find out more. Uh, find out more without line line of oh god. I guess I'm not really going to find out more without line of questioning, though. Right. Hmm. Okay, what else is important that I can ask in binary questions? Oh, I know. So, are you married yet? No. Ah, fair enough. Related to that, I uh, don't really know much about spaceships or anything, but I can get a visual on yours and it looks really, really small. Is it just you all alone there? Yep. A man in the middle of space, all on his own. Sounds awfully romantic. Well, I think that's about all I can ask of... All I can think of for now. Sorry, it's not really a lot to go off, I know. Although I guess I did get the most important things. I'll let you know if I think of anything else, alright? Anyway. From what it looks like, you were going over some logs with that crazy murderous bitch, right? <laughs> what? Apparently Mute thinks that Hyane is a crazy murderous bitch. I'd love to help you with those instead. As an added bonus, I promise I won't ever commit mass murder, unlike a certain someone. What? Hmm. Oh, wait a minute. Okay, so... Before, when I was talking to Hyun A, I had the Kim family tree. And now with Mute, I have the Smith family tree, so they... They're on different families, aren't they? Yeah, that must be why they don't like each other. Ah! Okay. It's 
Smith Dai Hyun. Okay, yeah, so here's what a family tree is supposed to look like. None of that weird cluttered mess that Hyun A did, but here's a few notes of my own about some of the women that you might actually care about. Smith saying hi. She lived to be about 30, 40, 50 years old. Older sister of the main Smith uh, branch. Married into Huang family in 2000. Yep, yep, yep. No sons. Okay, well, I guess this doesn't really matter until I actually know who they are. Yeah, I can always go back to that. Well, I think that speaks for itself, doesn't it? That's what a genealogy is supposed to look like. Hope that's more helpful. Okay, so is there anything new? There's not. Um, let's talk. <laughs> okay, so what is it that you want to know about? Why don't you show me something and I'll see what I can do for you, okay? Or what I can find for you, okay? Ah, right. Well, maybe I can get her comment on old notes that I've already read? That's my guess. Let's see. Ah, she... It's, actually, it's gray. I think that means she has nothing to say, right? You want to hear about the Smith family? Oh yeah, you're going to love this. Those people had problems like you would not believe. Technically, I belong to the Ryu family, but, well, I spent a lot of time keeping up on the Smith family's gossip. They used to be the most important noble house, above even the Kims, you know? So I know a lot about them. What sort of things do you want to hear about? Um, it, tell me something truly scandalous. I can definitely do scandalous. Oh, you're going to absolutely love this. It's really, really hot. Ooh. Unfortunately, it probably doesn't go into as much detail as you'd like, but, well, wow. Just see it for yourself. What did she just give me? Alright, so I've got two new messages, I think. Whoops. Yep, here we go. Unsent letter. Ooh, unsent. This should be juicy if it was unsent. Because it was probably unsent for a reason. By Oso... You know, if I say it, Oso Jin, it sounds really stupid. I think it's probably, probably something more like... Oh, Sojin? Yeah. That makes more sense. When I first saw you bringing my husband home in the late hours of the night, I was jealous. All I could think of was my daughter, and the first courtesan he'd had an affair with nine years ago. With every brief glimpse of you, what I saw as you passed through... Wait. With every brief... With every brief glimpse of you that I saw as you passed through our home, my, my heart burned a little, as if you embodied every single fault of my farce of a marriage. I will never send this letter, because I know how ridiculous it sounds. For weeks, I, a noble wife, could be jealous of a poor courtesan. But you are young and beautiful, full of energy and grace. I am none of these things. Only after you had been entertaining him for a month did I start to realize what I was really feeling. True, I was jealous. But not of you, for having my husband. I was jealous, jealous of my husband for having the affection of a girl so pretty as you. These are such ridiculous thoughts for a woman to have, I know, and even more ridiculous still is the way they have overwhelmed me. I used to dread my husband bringing his courtesans home with him, now I look forward to your nights together. How can I not, when it means that I am treated to the sight of your bashful face in the morning? When we exchange glances, you hide behind your long hair with so much cuteness and grace. My eyes can't help but wander to admire the way it rests on your breasts, to see your clothes draped loosely over your hips. I cannot help myself from admiring yours, your body as you try to hide from me. It is ridiculous to be so preoccupied with such thoughts, and perhaps I was better off not ha having not ever realized them. 
Nevertheless, even though I may be as much of a woman as you are, I find myself longing for the same affections you shower my husband with. There is more to it than that. I would like to truly get to know you better. I like to imagine that we have much in common, aside from the obvious. When I see you hiding in the corridor on those mornings, I imagine wrapping my own arms around those lovely hips, sharing long conversations about our tribulations in life. Discovering just how much alike we are, and perhaps, I like to imagine, we could share more than that. I have been married for ten years to a man who has never paid me any attention for nine of them. Perhaps my old age has made me bold, but I want more. The next time I see you, I promise I will say something. For in all my 26 years, I have never felt a longing for anything this intensely. I don't care how wrong it is. As a wife and as a woman, I want you, Hannah. Wow, she wasn't kidding. This is juicy. Wow. Interesting. So she's not jealous. That she... Not jealous of her, but she actually wants her. Hmm. Well, given the society they existed in, I'm guessing any sort of non-straight relationship would probably be frowned upon. Almost certainly. But I wonder just how much. Hmm. I guess we'll find out. My Art Is by Hannah My art is that of lies and lying, and of both I have much practice. I've said to men, I love you, falsely. I've suffered pain, but smiled in pleasure. But the hardest lie I've ever told was that I could live without you. Wait a minute, when was this sent? Hmm. Okay, so that was sent about a month after the unsent letter. So is this... Directed at... Oh, Sojin? Hmm. I wonder. Let's get Rai, uh, Mute's comment. I bet that's, that wasn't what you were expecting from a noble wife, was it? No, it was not. I still have a hard time believing that she was really capable of sinking to that. Okay, so I guess Mute is very judgmental, unlike Hyane. But, well, it totally does get even better. I'll show you. Just be warned, it's pretty depraved stuff. Oh my. Oh, whoa, it's an unsent letter from Hannah. Uh, like, five days after the last one. Oh, I think they actually got together. Or maybe they just felt the same about each other, but didn't tell each other? I don't know, we'll see. To my lovely Sojin. You made it so easy, you know that? I've always wanted to be seduced. Oh, she did try. The more I learned about it, the better I got at it. The more I thought about how lucky men are, that they'll get to be on the receiving end of it. It's always seemed like it would be so much fun. But that wasn't why I dropped my guard in front of you, by the way. I was actually really wary the whole time you were serving me breakfast. Do you know what I first thought? I thought maybe you were trying to poison me. <laughs> uh, I mean, not seriously, of course, but it crossed my mind. So, no, I really was guarded until you started talking. You know what it was that got me? Do tell me. How hard is it, studying to beat a courtesan? I answered modestly, Oh, you know, there's nothing to learn. You must have it or... Uh, you just have it or you don't. The answer that any man would expect. But you? You wouldn't have any of that. You said, Please, don't lie. I actually want to know. It takes years, does it not? That must be intense for a girl of your age. Then you leaned in. I started to blab about how it is... How it kind of is pretty intense, and I only realized an hour later that I was staring into your eyes, telling you, proudly, no less, about my whole life story. Our faces were barely a foot apart by the time I, m I noticed what you'd done. And that was how you caught me totally off guard. 
I had no idea what to do. Should I touch you? What's the right body language in that situation? Was I even interpreting, interpreting you right, or was it all just in my head? Not even the slightest clue. You had me good. And you played it so well. You know just the right moment to pull back and tell me to go on my way, but in a way that left me wondering. So Jin, you made it so easy. Returning home, my heart was so afluttered, my feelings so confused, and all I could think about was you. You, the bored old wife of my patron, actually managed to seduce me just like that. I've always wanted to know that feeling, and you know, it was everything I dreamed it'd be. Aw, I hope they got together. Although, I, in that society, you probably couldn't. Maybe they could have kept it secret. I don't know. It's kind of hard to keep secrets on a ship, though, isn't it? You want more from the whore? Yeah, sure, I can do that. Here you go. Wow, Mute is a terrible person. This one in particular... Whoops. This one in particular is just wow. Really wow. Yeah, it's super depraved, but man, it's also just... What a 16-year-old. Here, read it for yourself. Unsent letter 3 from O. Sojin. Wait a minute, hold on, I gotta check the dates. Right, so that was a little bit after the first one, and this one is a good two weeks after. Okay. How anyone can manage this, I do not know. Whenever I am with you, I feel as though there's so much pressure to be perfect, to not let you down, as if every hour of our being together is like a marriage interview with an emperor. And yet I can't stand it when you're gone. All I can think of all day is how I could hold your attention for next time. The night you snuck over knowing my husband was out, I was so terrified. You just suddenly appeared on my doorstep, your face veiled as if you were a noble woman, and I, I knew I could hardly turn you away. Do you know why? Wait, do you know why for I... I... Is that... That's weird grammar, I don't understand that. Do you know why for I immediately went to make you tea? Wait, what? And... I, I do not understand what this sentence is trying to tell me. Do you know why I immediately went to make your tea making you wait in the other room? To give me a chance to calm my nerves. Okay, yeah, that's just kind of a messed up sentence. I was surprised to realize you were just as nervous as I, so I knew I could take advantage of that. I put both cups on the same side of the table and sat cross-legged. Come, I said. Sit with me, and gestured. You were so graceful in sitting on my lap, your small body just the right size, and I saw that even you couldn't help but blush. And so we drank tea together. Wait, how... how small is she? And how old is she? Did Mute just say, oh, what a 16-year-old? Does that mean she's 16? Hmm. But halfway through, you put your cup back down and turned around, so you were facing me, our heads just inches apart. You whispered, forget about the tea. And clasping my free hand, your tiny fingers intertwined with mine. You kissed me, so softly. Up until that point, I had been so worried trying to figure out what I should do. Was I playing the man's role, or were you? But after smelling the scent of your breath and tasting the sweetness of your lips, how could I possibly ignore the passion stirring enough to care about such things? I put down my cup and took you by the chin, gently pushing you away. Oh, what longing and uncertainty was in your eyes at that moment, beautiful Hannah. I smiled as I stared back on them, intoxicated with the fact that I had you now literally under my thumb. I unclasped our hands and undid the bow of your blouse, watching your lips quiver as I pulled open the flap covering your small breasts. Running my fingers along the edge, I admired just how soft they were, so perfectly shaped. H are you sure? You started to ask, but I silenced you with that kiss you were so eager for. You shivered as I enjoyed the taste of your mouth and were so very anxious when I stopped and turned you back around once more. Will you sing for me? I whispered into your ear. You nodded, and referring to your trade, said, I'd love to write you a poem, Sojin. I responded, putting my hand up your skirt, Your poetry is beautiful, but hardly what I meant. 
<laughs> then I clasped your breast with my spare hand, delved deep with the other, and held you so very tight while I admired the loveliness of your voice. <laughs> what does Mute have to say about this? Yeah. That one is just, uh, wow. Anyway, I'll let you get back to reading. Well, I don't know if they had a market for erotica on the ship, but she could have published that as a little short piece of erotica, because that was good. That was really good. Unsent letter four from Hannah. That this is about a week and a half after the last one. You know what the first thing they teach you about this role is? Of course you do. I told you all about it. The first thing they teach you is to never fall in love. Nobody'd ever actually say, make sure you're in control, but that's the only way it'll ever work well. I'm supposed to be the one making people fall for me. Love is for men stupid enough to buy me out from the Emperor, not for me personally. I know exactly how you managed to do it, but so Jin, you got me all the same. You know, they teach us poetry because if you appeal to men's vanity and seem a little bit clever, it's a good way to hold on to them, get them to really keep paying. With the flattering kind, sincerity never really factors too much. An abandoned line from the one I've been trying to write for you. You grabbed my heart just as tightly as you grabbed my breast. Too trite. Way too trite. It's true, but I'm not going to dump such a lousy metaphor on you. For you, you absolutely deserve sincerity. It has nothing to do with vanity, and everything to do with the fact that I really do totally love you. It's not sexual. I mean, it is sexual, too. I still get hot thinking of how you had your way with me, and how I want to return the favor. But it's not just that. It's that you understand me, that you listen to me. I can pour my heart out in front of you, I can cry in front of you, and you get it. You don't feel bad, you don't feel pity, you don't use it as an excuse to manhandle me. You just get it, and comfort me by being there and listening. I love you, Sojin. I'm not supposed to, but I really do. Oh wait, oh, I didn't get her comment. Oh, I love you. Wow, just wow. You know, I kind of feel pity for her. She probably really did think that actually was love. Which is just, come on. How uneducated can you be? Anyway, I guess you want to see more now, right? That's really... Uh, that's really just the shocking details you've seen so far. Here's the part where things actually get scandalous. I've added three more entries. Okay. Unsaid letter 5 from O's Sojin. Wait, ah, I forgot to check the date again. This one... Oh! This one is from about two months after the previous one. It was only after I finally started to become comfortable with you, confident that you really were mine and that I didn't have to work to impress you, that things got complicated. My husband had left for the day, and you were still lingering, having spent the night with him, but it was for... me that you had a new love poem, and I undressed you while you sang it. When you were done, you clung to me, stripping me in turn while I simply kissed you and ran my hands from your tiny waist to your smooth ankles, and soon enough, we were both naked. At first I had felt so uncomfortable exposing my body like that to you, as if you'd see it and finally realize how old I am, but you never did seem to mind. Not as you placed soft kisses on my breasts, nor as you straddled me with your legs around my waist and arms around my neck. So entranced was I at that moment that I never heard the footsteps outside. We had just started to kiss when the door suddenly opened. Uh-oh! <laughs> what a scene to walk into! There my husband was, in the doorway, his courtesan and wife naked together, mouths still connected by a strand. For a moment, nobody said anything. Oh shit. This is where it gets scandalous. In that time, I felt terror as never before in my life. Sang Min is not a gentle man, and while he'd hardly ever raised his hand to me, 
Wait, hardly. So not never, just rarely, okay? I was still overwhelmed with horror that he might hurt me, or even worse, that he would hurt you. I had seduced you, but in that moment I realized if he did try, there was nothing I could do to protect you. But just as we were stammering our, I'm sorry sirs, he just laughed and laughed. Well, he said, ogling us with that cold stare of his, I am certainly paying you enough for two. Then he walked over and raised his hand and I stared in terror, but all he did was pat you on the head, as though you were a child. I don't know what she told you, but you don't have to pay any attention to her. Easier to just ignore her, really. All you could do was start to stammer. I... I wanted to... We were both so afraid, but he just laughed and shrugged. Whatever, he said as he passed through the other door. Neither of us knew what to do other than climb off each other and scramble to cover ourselves back up. While we both clumsily tried to dress ourselves, Sang Min walked back through the room once more, carrying a satchel. He'd forgotten it for work, I suppose. Don't have to stop on my account. If you ask permission, you can do whatever the hell you want, he said. Then he laughed again. Don't know what you think you're even going to do, though. Aren't you two missing something? I wish he'd struck me instead. It would have hurt me far less than what he said, or what you had to watch me do. Oh, God. Ugh. Well, uh, hmm. I'm trying to feel out the general feelings towards anyone in a non-straight relationship. I, he... His feelings aren't what, what I expected. He wasn't disgusted. He didn't seem to hate it, but at the same time, he... I, I don't even know the words. His reaction is disgusting, but it doesn't fall into any easy category. I'm not quite sure what to make of it. Hmm. Just imagine that scene, her and the whore pleading with her husband, being mocked like that. What do you make of that? Pitiful. I know, right? I mean, really, what an awful pitiful scene. <laughs> yes, but probably not for the reasons you think it's pitiful, Mute. It's not... I'm not saying he didn't have the right to say those things. Of, of course he did. That is his prerogative. And sure, sure, she was a bad wife. But still... Even if he had the right. That is a shitty way to treat her. He should have been a better man than that. Just... Really, what a pathetic scene. Just absolutely pathetic. He should have been ashamed, not laughing. Just no sense of shame. I'm glad you think so, too. Anyway, I'll let you get back to reading. Right, this is from Hannah. This is about two weeks after the previous thing. It's so unfair. Why couldn't you have been born a man instead? Sure, you lose your beauty and the gentleness I love about you, but at least you'd be able to do something, and saying men would be jealous instead of thinking of you as completely unthreatening. I just know you want to be able to stand up for me, and it's killing me to see that you're powerless to. Right now, he's happy to keep me around, you know, it gets him off to have something to hold over my head. I had no idea you were so lustful, that you'd even settle for a woman, he says. What's that like? The worst part? I know that the only way to keep seeing you is to play along. Oh well, you know, for a girl my age, I respond, and press my hands against my face to look like I'm embarrassed. It's just playing. It's not the same without, you know. I trail off because he thinks it's so cute when I'm too ashamed to say the word cock. Poor girl, he says as he roughly gropes me, and I force out all those soft moans and gasps to make him think that he's really making me happy. And I say awful things. Love, I say awful things about you. It kills me. It just kills me. And then I beg, just to see more of you. 
I don't know what leaves a worse taste in my mouth, him or those words. What else can I do? I'm sorry, Sojin. I know the last time I talked with you, all I did was cry. Thanks for not asking. It was just so hard to hold it, hold it all in while smiling cutely for your husband. We have the worst fate ever, don't we? God, that sucks. So I'm trying to pinpoint his feelings about this. He doesn't... He doesn't seem to care about the fact that it's a woman being with another woman. He doesn't seem to care at all. I had no idea you were so lustful that you'd even settle for a woman. So the way, is he, the way he's seeing it is that she's just... What, a pathetic... I guess... I think he just sees her as a pathetic whore, I guess. That's probably how he thinks of her. You know, she wants to have... She basically is saying you want to have sex with everything so much that you'd even settle for a woman. Emphasis on settle. As in it's pathetic. It seems like he just straight up basically hates women. Or at least finds them just generally pathetic and doesn't really particularly care about the fact that they have feelings for each other. Hmm. Well, uh, yeah. I guess you could... I guess you probably also find that sort of thing cute, right? It's okay, I guess. That's why a smart man stays the hell away from whores. Deception is just what they do. Well, that's women in general, I guess, now that I think about it. Um... You... You realize you are a woman, right? Or at least you have the avatar of a woman? Still, I bet if he'd read what she'd written there, he'd never have wanted to sleep with her. Anyway, I'll let you get back to reading. Alright, this is from... This one is from Oh Sojin, and this is about a week after the last one. Unsent Letter 7. The last time we spoke, I poured wine for you. Rather than the usual tea, it seemed as though you needed it. I held you tight while you drank, petting your hair and wiping every tear to drop from those deep, sad eyes. He's going to get bored eventually, you had said, and though I tried to comfort you, we both knew it to be true. I could try pressuring him to buy you, I had offered. It was our only... It was our only option, really. If he didn't, you'd simply return to the services... the service of the government to be rented out to who knows who, and we would never meet again. Thanks, you said. Do you think he'll listen, you asked. I wished nothing more than be able to lie to you, to say that of course I did, and that it would be all right. No, I said. I couldn't. We sat for a long time in silence. Finally, I said, even that, even that would be worse than you deserve. He owns me, and see how I'm treated. I wish you could have far better. Sorry, you said. Please, please don't be. All of this is my fault. If I had just been a good wife and left well alone, all this heartbreak could have been avoided. I said, trying to calm you, but you only cried more. When you had no more tears left, you spoke again. What about the other courtesan he bought? The real mother of Min Hai? What if you blackmailed him? If only. I would do it gladly for you, but the royal family knows already. I shot off my mouth in front of Mute once, without thinking, and soon enough, it was my own fault, too. Oh, you said. What if I give him a son, you suggested, even though I knew how appalling the thought was to you, and I couldn't help but laugh when I thought of why it would never work. Oh, Hannah, 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 I said. Do you think the reason I've never gotten pregnant was for lack of trying? I stroked your cheek. In the months you've been with him, has your period ever been disrupted even once? No, you said, as you realized what I was saying. It would never work. As tears fell from your eyes once more, you started to laugh, too. I figured it was just, you know, all chance. I shook my head. No child in the first year of marriage. That is chance, I said, laughing sadly. Whether he is too proud or too stupid to realize, I know not. But one child in 11 years of marriage? That is not chance. 
That is an impotent man raising someone else's daughter. You looked at me, realizing the plan was doomed. There aren't any real men in this house, are there? You said finally. We laughed and laughed, your future so sadly uncertain. God damn, this is sad. And hold on, this part. But the royal family knows already I shot off my mouth in front of Mute once without thinking. Hmm. Hey, Mute. I'm sympathetic to her, to her and all. I really am, but... Look, I still have to tell my mistress all about it. I couldn't just hide that. And frankly, I don't think she should have been gossiping about it, not the least of all to a whore. Doing unspeakable things to her, well, that's messed up. But it only affects herself. But telling the whore, the whore about her husband's failings, that's just reckless. That could harm the whole family. Well, not that the family needed any help cementing its ruin at that point. But it's the principle of the thing. It's still wrong. Anyway, I'll let you get back to reading. Well, that started out kind of erotic and then ended up really sad. Okay, well, I've been playing for about an hour and 20 minutes. So to save my voice, I'm going to end this episode and I'm going to make sure to save it first by pressing this button. Yes. There we go. Okay. Yeah, I'm loving this game even more. I thought I would get super, super lost about who all these people were, but so far I actually haven't. I mean, I don't know them all by name, and I don't, I can't like instantly recall who everyone is and exactly what their connections are and so on, but I am actually keeping up with the story, which is kind of amazing me. And the writing and discovering all of these bits of text is even more engaging than I thought it would be, and I thought it would be pretty engaging. So yeah, this game has some amazing writing. Really, really good. So I hope you've enjoyed so far and I will be back soon.